Hello world, welcome back to another Try Hack Me Challenge Room. In this video, we'll be walking through the room called Wise Guy. Let's get into it. Yes, it's me again with another crypto challenge. Have a look at the source code before moving on to task two. You can review the source code by clicking on the download task files button at the top of this task to download the required file. I actually already have the source code file downloaded here. It's this source.py file. But before we do anything with that, we're gonna go ahead and look at task two for a second. Your friend told me you were wise, but I don't believe them. Can you prove me wrong? When you are ready, click the start machine button to fire up the virtual machine. Please allow three to five minutes for the VM to fully start. The server is listening on port 1337 via TCP. You can connect to it using Netcat or any other tool you prefer. All right, I already started the machine up. And if you scroll up up here, you can see the target IP address. So let's go ahead and netcat into that. And it prompts us with a question. This XOR encoded text has flag one, and they give us a hexadecimal encoded string, and it asks us, what is the encryption key? So we need to figure out what the encryption key for this hexadecimal encoded string is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the source.py script to see if we can glean anything from it. So if we scroll down to the main execution, we start a thread up here with a request handler that runs the start function, which is right here. And it starts the server up, so it starts itself up. And then we have a result with a character set of ASCII letters and string digits with the key being five. So it's going to randomly select any five characters ranging from any lowercase to uppercase to digits. Then it's going to convert the key to a string. Then it's going to run the setup function. If we scroll up, we see our flag format here. Obviously, that's not our flag, but this will be useful later as this provides partial plain text that we can use to attack the XOR cipher with. And this is where it actually XORs our key with the plain text in order to get the encrypted text, which it then encodes in hex because I bet a lot of the characters aren't readable. That's the general premise of what's going on here. So we need to actually crack the hexadecimal code. Let's start off by importing the libraries we will possibly need. We'll import string as that gives us our character set. And then we're going to use the pwn library because that's going to give us an easy function we can use to actually XOR two strings or byte arrays together. Now let's go grab our hexadecimal string here that we're going to be working with. And we're going to set our encrypted flag to bytes.fromhex, right? Because we need the raw text. We don't need the hexadecimal string at all. And that's going to give us a byte string. And there's no point in printing that out because it's just going to be a bunch of gibberish. We'll go ahead and set our character set up here to be the string.ascii underscore letters plus string.digits, just like in the source PY script. And let's continue on by setting up a partial plain text. So we'll say part flag equals, and we'll go ahead and convert this to a byte array so that we can use it for home tools. Because we know based off of the source.py script that that is going to be a defining plain text string that we can use as a part of our decryption. So how do we derive the key? Well, we know the key is five characters, so we can at least get the first four characters based off of our plain text, right? Because all XOR is is taking the key and XORing it multiple times across the plain text. We can do our partial key by doing XOR, our encrypted flag, with our part underscore flag. And we're just going to grab the first four characters because that's all we're going to be able to discern from this. And let's go ahead and print that out just to check our progress. And there's the first part of our key. Now we don't need to do that anymore. So we need to actually figure out what the fifth character of the key is, which is very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through our character set. And we're going to set our full key equal to the part of the key that we found plus the character that we're currently looping through in the care set because it has to be one of those characters. So we're just going to try all possibilities. And it's only going to be 62 possibilities, so we're going to be able to crack the key very quickly. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and define our decrypted flag here. And we're going to say XOR encrypted flag with our key tester. 
And then we're going to say dot decode to turn it into a string, right? Because encode turns it into a byte string and decode turns it into a regular string. And then we're going to print each of those decoded flags. All right, let's run it now. We definitely got some interesting hits back. But what's a surefire way that we can actually pull the legitimate flag out? Well, the flag format does have another static character we can use to check to see if we get the correct flag, or to check to see which flag that we got from the results here is the correct flag. And that's actually the closing curly brace. So what we can do is we can simply do if our decrypted flag has a final character of a closing curly brace, then print our decoded flag. And while we're at it, Let's go ahead and tidy this up a little bit. We'll print our actual full key that we need to answer the first server question with. That way we can kill two birds with one stone. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and rerun it. And our key ends up being capital C, 9, lowercase q, capital S, capital X. And our flag ends up being plain text attack can really hurt your XOR. So we're going to take our key and we're going to paste it into our netcat prompt here. And I forgot you can't actually paste that in. So we need C9QSX like so. And then it says congrats, that is the correct key. Here is the flag. Brute forcing XOR can be fun, no? So our first flag ended up being this one right here. So we'll copy that and paste it into the first answer prompt. And then we'll take this flag right here, and we can actually copy out of the attack box. We just can't copy into the attack box. And we'll paste it into the second answer prompt. And I think I forgot to actually click complete on this first one here. So let me go ahead and do that. And with that, we have completed the room. And with that, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.